Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to News 3 Now, live at 4. It's, it's Friday. Friday. It's a special <laughs> Friday. It is a start of a three-day weekend. Yeah, it really is the big unofficial kickoff to summer. And that's right. And we'll also talk about the real reason for Memorial Day yeah. from the concert that's held on Sunday in that's, Washington, D.C. That's right. We'll have a preview of the National Memorial Day concert and all of the stars involved in mm -hmm. that. But first, here's what's making news on this Friday. James Patterson will spend the rest of his life in prison for kidnapping 13-year-old Jamie Kloss and killing her parents. Eric Franke will have this afternoon sentencing. The village of Lodi has lost half of its police force. Our Rose Schmidt explains why and what they're going to do for protection. And the president is sending a thousand more troops to the Middle East as tensions rise with Iran. Let's take a look outside today. It was a little bit of everything, a little rain and then some sun. Oh, look at this. What are those? This is the best time of the year. All of the... It's some sort of crane. Yeah. And well, the little ones. Oh, I love seeing them. You have to keep your eye out, though. They're yeah, all over the place right. right about now. The weather word's keeping an eye on the sky, and that's what our Dave Caulfield is doing right now in the backyard. Conditions are ripe. Yeah, we've already had a busy weather day across southern Wisconsin, Mark and Susan, and it could get busier as we head into this evening and the overnight hours. On visible cloud track, we've had the clouds and rain for much of the day, but take a look closer to southwestern Wisconsin and northeastern Iowa. See all that sunshine, all that clearing? Storms could start to fire up over the next couple of hours or so in that region, and they could get nasty pretty quickly. Doppler track not showing anything right now, but that could change as we get into this evening as some heavy rain and some stronger thunderstorms possible for southwestern and south central Wisconsin. In Madison, we're looking at that sunshine returning and we've had plenty of sunshine in Platteville to help fire up some of those storms. Temperatures in the upper 60s and lower to middle 70s, especially closer to where that sunshine has been out for some time. Temps are staying in these 60s with the chance of showers and storms as we head into the rest of this evening and the overnight hours. So here is a look at your first alert track traffic update. No major accidents or incidents to report across Dane County, which is good news, but keep in mind it is a busy travel day with the holiday weekend kicking off today, so give yourself some extra time. We're noticing those normal slowdowns on the Beltline. Verona Road eastbound to John Nolan. That's six minutes with an average speed of around 40 miles per hour. That's your first alert traffic update. We'll talk more on the storm chances in your first alert forecast. All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. First at four, the man convicted of kidnapping Jamie Kloss and killing her parents is sentenced in a Barron County courtroom. Jacob Patterson killed James and Denise Kloss last October before holding Jamie captive for nearly three months in Douglas County. Eric Franke has more on today's sentencing. Uh, Mark and Susan Barron County Judge James Babel are calling Jacob Patterson the embodiment of evil before sentencing him to two life sentences without parole for the murders plus 40 years for the kidnapping. He pleaded guilty in March to two counts of first degree intentional homicide and one count of kidnapping admitting, admitting to holding Jamie captive before her brave escape in early January. Last October 15th, he shot and killed James and Denise Kloss before the kidnapping, keeping her under his bed in that remote Douglas County cabin. While Jamie wasn't in court today, her family members asked for the maximum, saying Jamie no longer lives a typical 13-year-old's life and her family lives in fear every day. I don't want myself, Jamie most of all, nor my family to fear another day. I don't want another family to go through the nightmare my family has endured. Judge, as I come before you, I ask that you sentence the defendant maximum sentences on each count in this case. And Jamie's attorney read her words in court saying, quote, Jake Patterson will never have any power over me. He stole my parents from me. He stole almost everything I loved from me. He should stay locked up forever. The prosecutor in his argument said Patterson would never stop trying to find Jamie if he ever got out and that Patterson should never get another opportunity to kidnap another girl and kill her or anyone with her. Today's sentencing assures that he will not. Mark and Susan. Eric Franke, thank you. An apartment fire on Madison's northeast side last night has an unusual twist. The person who lives in one of the apartments says two men forced their way into his place. The victim ran into the bathroom and locked the door. A little later, he smelled smoke and climbed out of the bathroom window. Madison Fire and police are trying to sort out exactly what happened. 
The Lodi Police Department has lost half of its force and the city is looking for new recruits. Rose Schmidt is here and she spoke with a new interim police chief today following a string of resignations. Rose, what's going on? Yes, well, Lieutenant Wayne Smith from the Columbia County Sheriff's Office says he wants to reassure the community that everything is fine and he will keep the police department running at peak efficiency. Smith, the acting police, de police chief in Lodi, says he knows the city has had a hard year following flooding and the resignations of the police department's two supervisors and another officer all within a few weeks of one another going from six full-time staff members to three smith says he's not aware of why all the officers left calling it an unfortunate coincidence the county is stepping in to help backfill the vacancies and it's a hardship especially for a department this size to have uh, a lot of vacancies like that um, in law enforcement however when someone's seeking another job you know it takes several months the unfortunate part is that these things all happen at once and uh, you know kind of caught lodi uh, without enough help Smith has worked at the Columbia County Sheriff's Office for nearly 30 years and specializes in several areas, including homicide. He says he will be making a few changes in the Lodi Police Department while he's there, but he's also continuing to perform his duties for the Sheriff's Office. And his contract is signed through December in Lodi, but he'll likely be there until a new chief is hired and trained. The Lodi Mayor and City Administrator were unavailable for comment today. All right, Rose, thank you. British Prime Minister Theresa May announced that she is resigning after failing to carry out Brexit. Britain's vote voters approved exit from the European Union. Do so with no ill will, but with enormous and enduring gratitude to have had the opportunity to serve the country I love. The Conservative leaders has struggled to unite the British Parliament around a deal to divorce the UK from the European Union, something UK citizens voted for nearly three years ago. The opposition party leader is calling for a new general election. The divisions in the Tory party make a Conservative government untenable. There has to be an election so the people can decide their choice for their future. After her announcement, May traveled back to her hometown of Maidenhead. Many of her constituents feel she was trapped in a no-win situation. May will step down on Friday, June 7th. The Trump administration is preparing to deploy over a thousand more troops to the Middle East in response to growing tensions with Iran. Earlier this month, the administration deployed a carrier strike group to the region. Katherine Johnson has the latest from Capitol Hill. I don't think Iran wants to fight. Shortly before heading to Japan, President Trump announced the U.S. will be deploying 1,500 troops to the Middle East amid rising tensions with Iran. We're going to be sending a relatively small number of troops, uh, mostly protective, and we'll see what happens. The U.S. will also send Patriot missile batteries to the region. During an off-camera briefing, Pentagon officials said the beef-up in security serves three purposes greater visibility into Iran's forces, to shore up U.S. forces already in the region, and to have better ability to respond to any attack. We are seeking to um, avoid hostilities, and we are not seeking war with Iran. We have been as clear as we can possibly be in that regard, but we will be postured to defend ourselves and our forces in the field. CBS News has learned Trump administration officials did brief certain members of Congress on these deployment plans, but some are questioning the president's approach. Republican Senator Rand Paul tweeted, I strongly urge Donald Trump to reconsider more troops to the Middle East. The Democratic chair of the House Armed Services Committee, Adam Smith, issued a statement saying, quote, without a clearly articulated strategy, adding more personnel and mission systems seems unwise and appears to be a blatant and heavy handed move to further escalate tensions with Iran. Katherine Johnson, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Stocks eked out small gains in hopes on hopes of renewed trade talks. The Dow Industrials added 95 points but was down for the week, closing at 25,585. The Nasdaq Composite Index posted an eight-point gain, and the S&P 500 added three. A special thank you tonight to all of you who contributed to our Hunger Heroes campaign yesterday. We were helping to raise money for the Goodman Community Center Food Pantry. While they're still entering all of the data, it looks like we were able to raise more than $33,000 to help fill the shelves at the pantry. And that number includes two $5,000 matching gifts from the Culver's Foundation and Cisco Foods. So thank, thank you. you. Yes, yes, thank thanks you, everyone. Thanks to everybody who helped out. Yeah, absolutely. When we come back, it has become a Memorial Day weekend tradition, the national concerts from Washington, D.C. We'll have a preview of the 30th anniversary, and we'll talk to the host of this year's concert, actor Joe Montaigne, 
and a gold star wife as well. That's when Live at Four continues. The National Memorial Day concert, a tradition honoring our military heroes, returns live from the West Lawn of the U.S. Capitol for a special 30th anniversary broadcast. It's Sunday night on PBS at 7 o'clock. The National Night of Remembrance will mark the 75th anniversary of the D-Day invasion and pay tribute to America's Gold Star families for whom every day is Memorial Day. Joining us from Washington is the host of the concert, Tony Award winner Joe Montaigne, and Gold Star wife, Ursula Palmer, whose husband died while serving in Afghanistan. Nice to see both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Joe, this, uh, this concert really reflects the true meaning of this holiday. Tell us a little bit about what's on tap this year. Well, once again, it's just a cross-section of dramatic readings of musical numbers, uh, speeches that basically in a 90-minute program give you a perfect snapshot of what Memorial Day is and why we carve this day out every year and why, to my mind, why it's our most important holiday on, uh, on our calendar because it's, it's the holiday that allows us to celebrate all the other holidays. So we're going to have, we have actors like Sam Elliott from, from Oscar-nominated from um, uh, Star is Born, who will re be recounting the World War II story. Dennis Haysbert and myself will be doing a story from about Vietnam. We're going to be telling the story, Ursula's story, of, of, of her husband and also the organization that she represents. It's a whole, it's a 90-minute program that I encourage people to just carve out of their Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend barbecue, watch the Indianapolis 500, but if you can, catch the concert and it will help you totally understand why it's so important that we have this holiday 
and, and, and I think you'll be, you, you'll be glad you've, you've taken the time to do that. And this is your 15th year hosting this, this telecast. It has a special place in your heart, I assume. Yeah, without question. I mean, there, there was a lot of military in my family, but we were blessed in the, in the fact that they all pretty much came home. So to tell you the truth, Memorial Day wasn't even that significant in my life until I first did this concert. And I was just so taken by the experience and so taken by, you know, I went and visited the guys, at, and men and women at Bethesda and Walter Reed and, and, and really brings home that feeling of like, I've, you know, I've had a pretty good life. And, and, and yet it's, 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 some people have paid a much greater uh, kind of dues to live th that life than I have. And so it, it, it's only fitting that, that we, we try to call attention to that and try to pay back in, in, in the ways that we can uh, because they gave the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, that is what it's all about. It's an important thing to remember. Ursula, we are so thankful for your husband's service and so sorry for your loss. Can you tell us his story uh, and also tell us a little bit of the organization about the organization that you started for other Gold Star families like yourself? Uh, absolutely. Mm. On 2006, my husband volunteered to go to Afghanistan. He was there for about a year, and he volunteered for one last mission about two weeks before uh, being scheduled to come back home. And uh, when he was coming back from that last mission, his vehicle uh, was struck by an ID. He was severely injured. He survived for two and a half months, and then he passed away in uh, March 14, 2008. And um, I did not become involved right away with the Gold Star Wives at the beginning. It took a few years. Uh, but then um, I became friends uh, with Dr. Vivian Wurzel, a great friend of mine. And uh, she had seen a need, and it was, uh, there was some needs that were not fulfilled. Uh, not because there was anything wrong with it, but simply because there was a new need. And that need was that a lot of the new widows, of course, were younger, recent words, uh, words and uh, uh, with little kids, just different needs. And she said, well, why don't you come along with me and let's, let's found this new chapter. And we did, it's a virtual chapter uh, most of our husbands are uh, buried in Arlington. That's why we have it with the name Arlington. It, it, but it doesn't, it's not just for the city of Arlington. It's, it's for anyone who needs the support, anyone who would like us to maybe take a flower to, to their loved ones if they don't live in the city. Ursula, what message would you like to convey on this Memorial Day weekend? Well, uh, just as Joe has said in the past, it, it's okay for you to go ahead and have your barbecue, take that road trip, and enjoy a weekend of relaxation after a hard uh, week of work. Uh, but just take a minute and remember the reason why you're being able to enjoy that. Uh, but by all means, I, I don't get upset or offended if you tell me have a happy Memorial Day. Please, you have a happy Memorial Day because our loved ones have made the ultimate sacrifice so that we can continue to have this wonderful life. That is a message, a great message indeed. Take some time to remember those who served. Ursula, Joe, thanks for being with us today. Have a great show. Happy Memorial Day. We'll see you Sunday night. Thanks, thanks so much to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back. You're watching News 3 Now, live at 4.
Well, take a look at this. A flock of seagulls, not the group, showed up to Oracle Park in San Francisco to snack on food left in the stands by fans. But there's just one problem. The game wasn't over yet. The Braves and Giants played into the 12th inning when the Seagulls invaded the stadium. Oh, no. The birds helped themselves to french fries, pizza, and hot dogs, leftovers from fans who didn't stick around for the extra innings. Talk about a foul ball. Wow, That's look terrifying. at that. So, <laughs> it is. If you're afraid of birds, yeah. I think a lot of people left the stands because the birds came in. And it is an annual tradition here in Madison. The world's largest brat fest is underway. Now, we got there just after the rain stopped this noon, and the brat eating was just getting underway. And it's more than just food, remember. The event has four music stages for rock and metal, country, Latin, and Christian acts. There's a 5K, 10K, and a one mile run on Saturday morning and there's a huge kids zone and carnival rides to keep the whole family happy. Broadfest runs on Willow Island next to the Coliseum through Sunday. I wish I had better weather for, oh, are they yeah. going for to this, have weekend. Weather this uh, weekend. I mean, temperatures will be mild, so that's good news, but we'll have to keep dodging these storms as we have been basically all of May mm -hmm. at this point, but we'll need to keep an eye to the sky tonight because some of these storms that do form could be severe and pack heavy rain hail and high winds. We'll talk more about that in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Good afternoon and happy Friday. The kickoff to Memorial Day weekend is underway and we've already has a, had a busy weather day across southern Wisconsin with multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms coming through. But 
We are looking at satellite uh, imagery right now, and we can see that there is a big patch of clearing to the south and west. So the sunshine has been allowed to shine for the last two hours or so closer to Dubuque, Iowa, into Iowa City. Already starting to see a few thunderstorms fire up in that stretch, and we can see them right next to that Interstate 80 corridor. We'll watch this very, very closely because the atmosphere from about the I-80 corridor south of Waterloo uh, through portions of southwestern Wisconsin really up until Madison is starting to get really primed for uh, some nasty weather to potentially develop. So we're watching that closely this evening and possibly even into the overnight hours. We could be dealing with thunderstorms with heavy rain and also some hail and high winds, an isolated tornado or two, not out of the question either. So our eyes are to the sky and also uh, on the radar this afternoon and evening. Right now we are quiet after that round of showers and storms went through early this afternoon and we are under a slight risk still for much of southern Wisconsin of severe weather that's level two out of five a little bit uh, less likely that severe weather to the north and west so we've been dealing with the rain pretty much all month but the last week or so has been a very rainy one already today over the last 24 hours radar estimating about an inch of rain in Dane County but just to the south about two to two and a half inches of rain locally so we really don't need that much more rain to start to get into flooding potential. So a flash flood watch is in effect for some of us. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. So tonight, an alert day in the forecast still for those showers and thunderstorms, and some of them could last into early Saturday morning. Hail, wind, maybe even an isolated tornado or two, and heavy rain all could be in the cards for some of us. I mentioned that flash flood watch. It goes from this evening into early Saturday morning for the counties you see shaded in green. That does include Dane County and spots to the south and west as well. Here is a look in Platteville where we've had the sunshine for about two hours or so. And once we get that sunshine, that helps to what we call destabilize the atmosphere, really get the atmospheric juices flowing and allow for that nasty weather to possibly develop. It's developing a little bit to the south and west right now of Platteville, but we're watching that area for the environment uh, for storms to develop very closely in Madison on the Edgewater sky cam. We've had some high clouds develop over the last hour or so, but that sunshine uh, has come back out and temperatures have risen into the upper 60s over the last few hours. So still below normal for this time of year. But give that sunshine an hour or two, and I think we'll be closer to the 70s for highs. Already in the mid-70s in Platteville after being in the 60s for much of the day, 72 in Janesville. Those wind speeds have been gusty throughout the day, especially that second round of showers and storms. We had what is called a wake low develop, especially for our friends closer to La Crosse. What happens is the rain and storms are a lot colder than the atmosphere just uh, behind it. And that pressure difference and temperature difference actually creates some very gusty winds. So wind gusts of about 50 miles per hour in La Crosse earlier on today. So for the Memorial Day weekend, we have to continue to dodge those rain and storm chances. More storm chances come at us, at least in the slight variety as we get into later on Saturday. Sunday should be dry for uh, many of us, so if we have those outdoor plans, I think we are good on Sunday. But for Monday, an alert day in the forecast for Memorial Day for another round, potentially, of severe weather and heavy rain. At least we get those mild temperatures to stick around. On future track, the RPM picking up the potential for a couple of strong to severe thunderstorms rolling through this evening. Now it's difficult to exactly pin down where those will develop, but the atmosphere, as I mentioned, is pretty ready to get those thunderstorms to start to develop south and west of Madison. Then we could have some bouts of heavy rain into the overnight hours and into Saturday morning, so we'll watch that. Then another round of showers and storms possible later on Saturday. Now this chance doesn't look to be as good as the chance for severe weather today, but we'll watch that. And then into Sunday morning, I think that rain stays closer to the state line and setting up a dry day on Sunday. Did you catch all of that? I know, it's a lot. It's a lot to uh, keep track of on this seven to 10 day forecast. We have the alert day in the forecast on Monday. More shower and thunderstorm chances for Tuesday and Wednesday. I do think we'll start to quiet down in the weather department a little bit by the time we get to Thursday and Friday with temperatures near 70, but it is May after all. And 
May typically keeps us pretty busy in the weather department. That trend looks to continue over the next week. It's almost June. It's almost <laughs> June, yeah. I'm crossing my fingers that we get there sooner rather than later. All right, all right keep an eye on things. Mm -hmm. And Chris Reese will have plenty to do. I'm sorry. We have a different script here. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's right. Chris will keep us up to date on the Memorial Day weekend weather. Including checking out CBS Sunday morning. And Jane Pauley is with us now. And the show last week from Florence was absolutely stunning. Thank you for that. And this week, somebody else is going on the road. Uh, pardon? This week, someone else is going on the road. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that was clever of you. You bet. <laughs> we have a story that's coming. I'm with you now. We've got a story this Sunday that gives new meaning to the backseat refrain, are we there yet? We'll be looking at the freewheeling folks who live life on the road. Tony DeCopel caught up with Robin and Robert Shinep and their four kids in Tennessee as they travel the country in the converted school bus they call home. Here's a clip. We kind of started questioning the mentality that just because you have kids, everything is put on hold. We love to travel, and we thought, well, why can't we just bring our kids with us? Ah, so this is it. Home sweet home. <laughs> home sweet home. Can stand up? Just barely. <laughs> How many square feet is this? 250. She knows her off the top of her head, yes? Mm -hmm. 250 square feet, that's great on a rainy day. Mm -hmm. Not a lifestyle for everyone maybe, but it's got a certain appeal, don't you think? Yeah, it is, it is very intriguing. I'm looking forward to seeing Tony's report. What else is on the show this weekend? Well, we found uh, actress Annette Benning a little closer to home here in New York. She's back on Broadway after more than 30 years. And we'll meet the leaders of a movement to erect monuments to notable women. For example, this morning, I checked. Here in Central Park, there is a statue of Alice in Wonderland and a dog and almost a dozen statues of men, but no women at all. So we'll have that story and a whole lot more as usual. We'll see you Sunday morning. At 8 a.m. Jane, have a great weekend. Thank you. And thank you. It's you, always fun to chat with you. You stumped Jane. <laughs> that was very creative I didn't, of you. I didn't mean to. <laughs> that was cute. Oh, yeah. She's, she's great to talk to. All right. There's more to come at 4 up next. We're going to head to the movies. We'll have a preview of Disney's new live action version of Aladdin. That's when Live at 4 continues.
Here's a live look from the Edgewater Skycam. There's lots of people at the Union Terrace. They don't care about little clouds, do no. they? It's Memorial Day weekend. Well, Disney's live-action remake of Dumbo flew into theaters in March. Now another animated favorite is getting the live-action treatment. David Daniel has a preview of Aladdin. who summons me. I'm kidding, watch this. Will Smith gets genie with it in the new Aladdin. Egyptian-born Mina Masood plays the title role, one of the only big screen characters he says he could relate to growing up. He looked like me, he had a similar culture, so to get to play him now is, is an honor, and I hope I can continue that um, representation for little boys and girls watching the film. I thought a princess could go anywhere. Not this princess. Naomi Scott felt a similar connection to Princess Jasmine. I had such a personal relationship with that character, and I love that character so much. I think it's just the opportunity to to, to humanize her. Alan Menken, who won two Oscars for the animated original's music, had plenty of questions when he boarded the remake. You know, what does the director want that's new? What's the director's point of view? What's the new book writer's point of view? What's, what are the new ideas that are being introduced? Because that's what it's all about. It wouldn't be Aladdin without a whole new world. Masood says they spent two weeks working on the iconic number. For us, the most important thing was just the connection and, and the chemistry and, and what that song represents. So I hope everyone reaches for their tissues. That would be great. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And we'll, I mean, we're not going to review because we're not on the air Monday. You're going to be humming that music all day, well, though. Well, just for a couple of minutes, because <laughs> now, from the movies to a musical, Mamma Mia, to be more specific, is performed at the Palace Theater in the Dells this summer. Our Michael Bruno went backstage. We'll find out what he found when Live at Four continues.
Good afternoon. Here is your Friday first alert traffic update. Keep in mind it is a busy travel day with Memorial Day weekend kicking off today. So while westbound on John Nolan and the Beltline not looking too bad, eastbound is running a little bit slow as you might expect for this time of the afternoon. Not looking too bad overall on the Beltline though. So there are some stretches of slow go, but overall not looking uh, anything like we would typically see at this time, at least according to our traffic map and Verona Road looking not bad about 25 miles per hour in some stretches on Stoughton Road, but give yourself some extra time anyway this evening just because a of the weather and b of the busyness of the travel day. So your drive times, everything showing up green right now. University Ave eastbound to the interstate average speed of around 50 miles per hour and that'll cost you 17 minutes and that is your first alert traffic update. All right, Dave, thank you. Sydney Opera House has come alive with Australia's native flora as part of the city's annual Vivid Light Festival. The UNESCO World Heritage Site was turned into a huge digital light sculpture. It's called Austral Flora ba Ballet and celebrates the country's native plants. This annual event, which runs until June 15th, attracts two and a quarter million people a year. It's spectacular. That is. I, I, wow. It's one of my destination places. Me too. It's on my list too. Get to Sydney. <laughs> Well, in 1975, the Swedish pop group ABBA topped the charts with a song called Mamma Mia, and that song was turned into a jukebox musical in 1999. Over 60 million people have seen the show since its debut. It's grossed $2 billion <laughs> worldwide, and they're going to have to add to that total because Mamma Mia is now at the Palace Theater in the Dells, and our Michael Bruno went backstage to check it out. So Mamma Mia is about a single mother named Donna Sheridan who runs a taverna over here in gorgeous Greece, as you can tell by our set. Um, she has a daughter named Sophie who is about to get married. Sophie doesn't know who her father is and Donna's kind of been keeping that a secret for all these years. She finally one night has given up on asking her mom and she just reads her journal. She finds three possibilities of three men who could be her father. And she uh, sends out three letters signed from her mother to three potential fathers. So now that she's about to get married, all she wants to do is have her father walk her down the aisle as any young girl would want. But mom won't talk about it. Yeah, mom doesn't like to talk about it. <laughs> mom, she's a little bitter still. <laughs> Unbeknownst to her, all three fathers show up at the same time on the same weekend of the wedding. Donna has to deal with seeing her old lovers for the first time in 21 years. The audience kind of has fun figuring out the mystery of who uh, Sophie's possible dad could be. Insanity ensues. And chaos ensues. And hilarity ensues. And then we end up in this, somehow. <laughs> Watch that scene. And talk to me about some of your wonderful choreography, because you put all the styles in there. My choreography? Yes, your choreography. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I was thinking of just making each number something different again, like, because, you know, I did Joseph as well here. And so this time I just wanted to almost give it that Broadway feel or the tour feel. So I would pull and I would watch, like, the tour or the Broadway versions on YouTube, but then I'd add some Joshography to it to, like, make it mine. So I think that's where we came up with some of the most fun stuff that we had in the show. So. <laughs> I am uh, Bill Austin. Bill Austin is an Australian chap, and he is uh, kind of the fun-loving dad of the three. He's the, he, you know, he's an adventure seeker. His job is he's a travel writer, and he travels all over the world. He's not big on commitment, and that comes into play much later in the show as well. I play Sam Carmichael. He's a New York architect, uh, recently divorced. He is the dad who has the biggest history with Donna, so we find out pretty quickly in the course of the show that uh, Sam and her have had a rocky uh, past, uh, kind of rockier than the other two dads. So him being uh, on the island is, is not very comfortable for him because he knows when he sees Donna, something's going down. Harry is a banker from London. He's kind of the heart of the show. He may not understand how to convey sympathy towards you or anything like that, but what he does know how to do is cheer you up and make you happy. Hopefully, one of them will strike her and she'll see that, oh my God, it's my dad. She just wants it to be a moment, but it's not. And it goes throughout the whole show of her getting moments with different um, 
different characters, different fathers at different times, different songs add in, and uh, she doesn't figure it out. And she's okay with it at the end because she realizes who she is and she doesn't need to find who her dad is to know who she is. Is hit after hit. It is oh. such a great show. <laughs> Hi, Michael. It's all Emma all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, I mean, this is entertaining. It is entertaining. From, from start it, to finish. It, it, for it the whole family, is. too. It, it, it's for, all fun for the whole family, and it's it, it's amazing how they can take all those songs and then weave it into the storyline. Yeah. Because all of a sudden you're, you're thinking, how are they going to make these songs into a plot line? But they, they really do have an amazing job of doing that. Do you, is there ever any audience participation? Do people, like, get involved and sing, too? Uh, they have they have a sing-along at, 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 the, at the mega mix at the end. Oh, they can all sing fun. along, and the, the big screens come up, and they have the, the, the words, the, 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 the music for the oh, words on there. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's really fun. And, and the palace. Here. It's, a, it's a dinner theater. It is a dinner theater, and they have m wonderful options. You can you can do the show only, then they also have a snack bar out in, in the uh, in the lobby. But they also they change up the dinner with every show. So they have like a, a seasonal, you know, uh, menu that they put in for each show. So they change it up really nice. They do a great job there. It's and the food's wonderful. done by the time the performance starts. Yes, you yeah, want to eating while they're yeah, no, they, okay. they serve the food before the show, and then they serve the dessert during intermission. Okay, that's a great night out. It is a yeah. great night out. Yeah. Mamma Mia at the Palace Theater now through September 1st, all summer long. Go to dellspalace.tix.com. Next week? Uh, next week, it's the Capitol Theatre <laughs> production of uh, uh, On the Town. <laughs> Great Dancing show. Sailors. Great show. All right. Have a good holiday weekend, Thanks, Michael. Michael. I need it. We'll <laughs> I'm exhausted. We'll be right back with the final check of your forecast. <laughs> An alert evening on tap. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good way to describe <laughs> it. Yeah, we are watching the skies very closely uh, for the threat of some stronger to severe thunderstorms later on. Already starting to see something trying to form over eastern Iowa. Some storms there. Uh, nothing to be concerned about just yet, but we'll keep a close eye on it because some heavy rain can come from these thunderstorms. Also, hail, high winds, even a tornado or two not out of the question. And that alert day also in the forecast for Memorial Day on Monday. So we'll 
will definitely have to uh, keep a close eye on the weather throughout this weekend. We should get some dry periods, though, on Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures tonight in the 60s. Sunday looks pretty good. Sunday looks nice. Yeah. Okay. All right, Dave. Thank Thanks, you. Dave. And Monday here on Tuesday. Tuesday <laughs> here on Live at Forward. No show on Monday. Consumer Reports will show us how to safely shop at a farmer's market. And we'll talk to Madison author David Marinus about his new book, A Good American Family. That's coming up Tuesday on Live at Four. We'll be right back. The first big holiday weekend is here, and Lola and Louie are looking forward to it. And the weekend begins right after this week's edition of the News Hounds Now Update. It's News Hounds Now Update with Lola and Louie. This week on the News Hounds Now Update, a happy Goose family reunion. An emu arrest. And some new residents at Chicago's Shedd Aquarium. But first, a newborn sloth at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo in Colorado Springs is getting a loving but slow welcome to the world from its mother. The Hoffman's two-toed sloth was born this month from first-time mom Chalpua, who's 19. Her pregnancy came as a surprise. The zoo says since sloths are nocturnal, Chalpua and a male sloth named Bosco probably made after zoo hours. Mom and baby are now bonding as they slowly lick each other on the nose. More zoo babies. The Shedd Aquarium in Chicago is welcoming two new baby Magellanic penguins following the annual breeding season. The chicks are being cared for by their parents, Chile and JR, and another penguin couple, Howard and Georgia, who help keep them warm. Staff at the aquarium will continue to monitor the baby's growth throughout the next few months. Two goslings in Colorado took a misstep down a storm drain. An animal control officer not only rescued the little ones, but searched nearby to find their family. The two young birds were reunited with their parents for a happy gosling reunion. All right, you emu, come with me. Police in Phoenix.